an old podcast time. Introduction. Yeah. Yeah. Um, welcome to uh, the introduction to this week's episode of the Super Divorce Supercast. Um, please, please, please don't just check us out here. Check us out everywhere. Yeah, because we're everywhere. Where? We are on Facebook uh, dot com slash super divorce. We have our special group on Facebook called the Divorce Club that you can check out um, and become a member of and interact with us even more directly, I feel like, than, uh, than some other ways. You can find us on Instagram at Super Divorce Band. You can find us on Twitter at Super Divorce. And uh, we're still plugging Snapchat, even though we don't really add to Snapchat. So Yeah, you can always follow us there, and then if something comes up and yeah. it's like hey surprise yeah then yeah. then you know we'll be we'll be there too also you can find us on our own our very own awesome website superdivorceme.com uh there you can i haven't checked it in a in a in a little bit but you can find all kinds of stuff about what's going on with us i'm sure links to this and that and the podcast links to the and podcast uh, you can still buy a copy of wish you the best yep in the store there um and uh that but you know you want to check that out and keep that in mind because that's where we're going to have lots of information you know here coming up here soon yeah um and then you can get in contact with us very directly uh by emailing Divorce club at superdivorceme.com. You know, we want to hear from you. We want to hear about your day. We want to hear questions. We want to hear anything. But more importantly, you can, if you email us and if you put in the subject line to sweet me, and if in the body of the email you put your shipping address, you will be entered to win a free, completely free, completely free mixed CD that we draw for every Sunday. And uh, we have been alternating, and uh, let's see, this week, it'll be your win, right? Yes. I will be compiling this week's playlist. Yep. Ten tracks, and uh, that'll be just for you. Just for you. Even write your name on the CD before yep, you Yep, they're all it personalized. The actual CD itself is, has, is handwritten by Nick. Yep. And uh, those playlists are, we're, we're taking turns, so this week Nick is compiling the playlist, and then next week I will compile the playlist. And if you enter once, you are entered for life. Yes. So you don't have to email us every week, just once, or just one time, and then you're, you're in that drawing every week, uh, henceforth. Yep. Uh, and then we're also personally on various social medias. Uh, you can find me on Twitter at Bender If You Nasty. That's the letter U, Bender If You Nasty. And then you can find me on Instagram at Bender Butt. And uh, if you want to follow me on Snapchat, I think the easiest way to do that is to my profile picture on Twitter is my Snap code. And your thing. name, I think, is Bender's Butt. Bender's that... Butt? Yeah. So exactly. Bender with a Z, Butt. I think it's just an S. Actually, S? Yeah, oh, just Bender's know. butt. Well, Bender's butt, butts, lots of butts. I'm <laughs> I'm very into butts. So, uh, yeah, search for me, Bender's butt, Zach Bender, snap code, whatever. But that's how you can follow me personally. And then if you want to follow me, um, I keep it pretty simple for you. I'm just Nicholas Villars, at Nicholas Villars on Twitter and on Instagram, and then... Just Nicholas Villars on Snapchat. Yeah. So we uh, we do pretty well keeping up with all that stuff. So. I need to update my Instagram, but yeah, same here. I don't but. have. I got I got I got some stuff to post. I got a new T-shirt in the mail the other day. For some reason, Instagram seems like more of a to-do when you make an Instagram. It post. does it's because like, you want it to be you want it to be a good picture. Yeah. You don't just want to like have a stupid ass picture. Yeah. You know, on your Instagram. Because you don't, I mean, Twitter, you can update fucking a hundred times a day. Yeah, and I'm know. starting to fall off on that too. And I need to like re-up, you know, get back into the habit of just like posting whatever the fuck I'm doing. Yeah. Um, but, 
Yeah. So we're you know we've both been very busy. Yeah. Too. So, but we're 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 keeping we're keeping it up. So follow us, follow the band, and interact with us somehow. And uh, check out today's episode where we cover a lot of ground. We talk about cereal. Yep. Um, how you should eat your cereal. Uh-huh. Uh huh. Dry or wet. Yeah. Uh, we talk about the best kinds of cereal. We talk about the worst kinds of cereal. We also talk about topical ointments, um, the best and worst, what we use, what we hate. <laughs> <laughs> and then uh, super, well, not superpowers, video, video game, game moves. Uh, yeah, moves, moves, powers, whatever. Uh, particular to video games, not yeah. just like superhero powers. The ones we moves. wish we had. Yeah. And ones that would be of practical use, yeah, to us. Mostly, I didn't. I, I I really didn't think of any any move where I was just like, "It'd be rad if I had this move because I could dominate my enemies." I was just yeah. like, "Hmm, what's the best way to get the remote from the coffee table?" Exactly. <laughs> 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 um, and then uh, we did uh, some wrestling discussion. Oddly enough, so that's I'm really excited about that. Yeah, Nick's got a boner. I do. (laughs) So um, check out this episode, and we will uh, see you guys soon. Yep. Bye. Bye. We are not getting a divorce. We are not getting a divorce. We are not getting a divorce. Hey, it's the Super Divorce Supercast. I'm Nicholas. I'm Bender. What's up? (laughs) <laughs> Nothing, man. I'm perpetually tired. That's what's up. Uh, I hear you for different reasons. I'm, yeah. I'm not looking for people. Yeah. But I was just thinking about, like, when I was walking up to the room here, it's like, God, I've just completely neglected self-care for like <laughs> four days <laughs> he said i've been fr- in front of my computer like non-stop yeah doing shit and working on secret things and all that right it's, but yeah i uh, it's like you know i i i can't complain a lot because i do i do go to bed very late but yeah you know Lindsay is a night owl and she you know, she's very adamant about, like, she is going to, she's going to draw her tattoos when, like, she's ready to draw, like, mm-hmm. when she's in the zone or whatever, because then she's going to produce her best work and all that yeah. kind of stuff. So, you know, a lot of times she might not get started till like, one thirty or 2 o'clock in the morning, and then, you know, I, it's, it's become, you know, we're getting to bed at, like, 3.30 or 4.00 sometimes and then when do you wake up well you know usually I, like you usually have a morning usually shift. I, yeah usually i wake up at uh, now the last couple of weeks i've had to wake up at eight instead of nine to get to work um and then i only have the one day a week on saturdays when i work a double shift when i have to be up at five mm. and that you know i'm like if she's gonna stay up well i'm mm-hmm. going to bed uh but I just, even, you know, a lot of times now I get off at like four o'clock and I'll come home and sleep and then wake up and then she gets home and we hang out and eat and then I like fall asleep again. And then, you know, sometimes I'll wake up and we'll hang out a little bit more and then go to bed and it's still like, just not enough. Yeah. Well, I get it. You know, you have to almost just force yourself to be okay with getting less sleep than you need or else you wouldn't be able to do anything fun. Yeah, exactly. You know? I mean, you know, you just, you, you sit down and you're like, okay, like I have 24 hours to do stuff mm-hmm. and then it's like just gone before you know it and it's the next day and it, I don't know why and like, you know, in, a, in adult life or whatever, it's like you, you really, really have to like plan to do things and then do them when you plan to do them or else well, you if never you have, do anything. If you have interests, you know, of course. It's so like, I think I told you, I kind of, I'm not the type of person who just naturally likes planning my day. Yeah. If I had it my way, I would just like do what I felt like doing right. whenever I felt like doing it. But 
as you were saying, when you're an adult, especially if you're trying to wear many hats, as they say, then you have to really figure out where things can fit. Yeah. And it's like a puzzle or else you, you won't get to everything. It just won't happen. Right. So like I, I ended up making a schedule for every single day of the week because my days are different now because of Lazarus being in school and when he's going to be at a sitter's house when he's not. So like I couldn't just make one day's plan and then carry it over to all seven. Mm -hmm. Like every single day is a little bit different and it totally changes when I have to do certain things. And, um, so anyway, to, to fit everything in, I had to like start being okay with getting six hours of sleep, even though I hate that. Yeah. But you know, after a while you can get used to it. I think, you know, just... yeah. I mean, like I said, you know, I typically run on like four to six, mm -hmm. like on really any given day, I've probably only had about four to six hours of sleep. Yeah. And I get. I guess that you could say at this point I I'm used to it or something. It's just I'm used to it, but also I just feel a lack of energy. Yeah. You know, overall, like yeah. An, like an overall lack. Like I still will make myself do things, or I'll you know I have to go to work, or if I want to do this after work, I'll do it, or if I'm gonna go out on a Saturday, I can do it and stuff like that. But then you still just even if, you know, a lot of times, and it kind of it kind of sucks, but a lot of times Lindsay and I will be in bed on a Sunday, all just literally all day, you mm -hmm. know, and then and that, but that one day of twelve hours of sleep isn't it doesn't it doesn't catch me up. Yeah. You know what I mean, yeah. there's no such thing as like catching up on no, sleep anymore. It doesn't work. I mean, like, I think when you start dipping down into like the four hour range that's when it starts getting intense. Yeah. You know, I feel like I can hang pretty well on six if I just, if I stay busy, you know, um, and like, I'll try and do a nap in the afternoon mm -hmm. and I think that can help recharge the batteries a little bit. Yeah. You know, if you throw in a little bit extra, you know, just to kind of get your bearings, but I don't know, getting four hours every day, that would be rough. Yeah. Well, I know it's just, you know, like we were, we were pretty good about going to bed around like two, Yeah. but I don't know what happened. There was one day there was just a shift mm -hmm. and it became like when she got home from work, it wasn't like figure out what we're going to do for dinner. It was like, okay, let's hang out for a little bit. Mm -hmm. And then dinner gets pushed back to like you know, 11 o'clock midnight yeah. or whatever. And then we hang out after dinner and then she doesn't start drawing until two or three yeah. now, instead of, instead of starting at one or, or so, you know? Yeah. So, it, uh, yeah, there, there was, there was a definite, there was a definite just shift one day about like when we were going to do things. It definitely takes, a good amount of discipline to stick to it, mm -hmm. you know? So, I don't know. You can, if you set your mind to it, Bender, you guys yeah. can get back to going to sleep at the early hour of 2 a.m. Yeah, right. <laughs> yeah, but, you know, again, you know, like, uh, yeah, again, you still feel like you just don't have a lot of time to do stuff. Like, I, you know, I don't see her mm -hmm. all except for that little time. And it's like, it, you know, we want to spend time together and, and then it's like, a, it, sometimes it's, you know, a determinant from like going out and doing stuff because it's like, well, you know, we don't have to want, don't want to put any effort into having to do all this other stuff. Like you just want to sit here and like be together. Yeah. And then, you know, and then, but you don't feel like sitting together for like three hours and then being like, okay, I'm done mm -hmm. bed. Mm -hmm. It's just stupid. <laughs> so I don't know. Uh, it's, 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 I don't know, it's been like that for a while. I mean, since even really before I met Lindsay, so, I don't know, I just deal with it, I guess. Well, I wish you 
all the best yeah in figuring out your schedule hopefully one day we'll just be famous and yeah it'll you know it won't really matter that much right we won't have to wake up at 8 a.m for work or anything well we might have to but for different reasons yeah for different reasons we've got press more fun six in the morning yeah whatever this radio station yeah but if we have like a tour bus where somebody drives us yeah that would be fine and you just finish the show it but even that you know it's like you finish a show at 11 or 11 30 midnight ish Mm -hmm. and then you just you know hop on the bus and i mean we're just two guys like we're down to have a good time but yeah i think if we get to a point where we're on the road and stuff it's not it's definitely not going to be party every night you know it's going to be okay if we have to be up at five in the morning because we got to do radio at six get on the bus and go to bed like (laughs) (laughs) let somebody drive us to the to the next city drive us safely yeah that's the only thing that i don't know you think about you know these bus drivers and stuff like who are these people right do you I, i mean hopefully you can check credentials and the people who are providing them as like possible bus drivers for you would have some way of checking their history yeah you know, you don't want the guy who um, has been reprimanded three times for falling asleep, you know. Yeah, <laughs> driving your bus. Yeah. You just get you just get that one friend that's down to sleep all day mm-hmm. while you do stuff and yeah. then drive you all night. Hmm. Well, we, uh, <clears throat> we asked a few, well, we asked for some topics of discussion tonight yeah. on the Divorce Club page. And um, I, I, I'd like to start with this one here by uh, our buddy Andrew. And he was wondering um, what our favorite breakfast cereals are Yeah, from childhood and now. And uh, then he would like us to compare and contrast how our tastes have possibly changed over the uh-huh. years. Um. I love peanut butter crunch. Peanut butter crunch. Yeah, a lot. So uh, in the Captain Crunch uh-huh. family, uh-huh. but not Captain Crunch itself. Which I like, but peanut butter crunch is definitely better. I don't know if I ever purchased peanut butter crunch. Really? Yeah. I'm a big Captain Crunch fan. Captain Crunch is like, you know, it's it's good, but it's dangerous. Peanut butter crunch <laughs> is less dangerous because they're circular. Yeah. Yeah. So it's like, um, oops, all berries, peanut butter. but with peanut butter. Yeah. Yeah. Um, when I was a little kid and we go to my grandma's house, she would always have, um, Chex mm-hmm. cereal and we would always, we would eat that, but we would always get like a spoonful of sugar in the bowl, mm-hmm. you know, because you're a kid and you don't like plain cereal. Not me. Yeah. When I was a kid, I did not want to put sugar on my cereal. Well, I only did it with, like, Chex or Corn well, even, Flakes. even that shit. Really? I like, because my uh, my grandpa always had rice Chex. <laughs> yeah. It's a little bit different than Chex, right? I, uh, I think so, probably. Don't, don't Chex have, like, different, sort of, like, different colors? No, Chex were just, like, the hexagonal... Yeah, I know they're they're hexagonal. I thought that there were like some darker brown oh, and like maybe lighter like brown. multi-grain checks. Yeah, okay. But they had a regular kind that were just all corn or rice or whatever. Maybe the way maybe we had rice checks too. I don't okay, know. maybe so. Anyway, it's it's very bland. Yeah, I'll give it to super, you. I can understand. Super bland. I look back on myself at that age and I'm like, why would a little kid want to eat this <laughs> just by itself? Yeah, it's kind of like eating uh, plain rice krispies. Yeah, you know, well, I don't like plain rice krispies. They're, plain rice krispies are good for nothing except rice krispie treats. <laughs> you know, I like cocoa krispies, but I hate cocoa krispies because you get so far into the bowl and then they're all just like soggy and hard to pick up. You end up with like a bunch of, you know, like twenty or so odd <laughs> little krispies floating in the top of your milk. Speaking of my grandpa, he would he would prepare like before bed. We'd always get ready for bed when I'd, like, stay the night over there. Everyone would get ready, turn all the lights off in the living room, head back to the bedroom, and then, like, once you were kind of in nighttime mode, then 
my grandpa and I would go back to the kitchen and make a bowl of cereal. He always liked to have a bowl of cereal before bed. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds like such a grandpa thing. It is. <laughs> it does sound like a grandpa thing. But he would he would pour his cereal, pour the milk on it, and then like go do a couple random tasks and come back like five minutes later Ugh. after it had just been sitting. Gross. So that like the cereal was just like a mush. Gross. Just like any possibility of it being crispy had uh-huh. to be extinguished before he would sit down and eat it. That's gross. So, I know. Um, I love Smacks and Golden Crisp. Yeah. Basically the same cereal. Mm-hmm. Those are delicious. That's a cereal that I love and I almost never buy. I don't, I don't know why, but I I love it. And I think um, in contrast to like cereal in childhood and adulthood i for whatever reason prefer like cereal as a snack Mm -hmm. but dry like i buy peanut butter crunch and i just eat it out of the box you know or i buy cinnamon life and just eat it out of the box but if i'm gonna buy golden crisp i eat it with milk all the time every time and i was the same way when i was a kid like you know but that cereal is, for me has become kind of just a snack, a snack food like chips almost. Yeah, I mean it makes sense. Yeah, there's nothing wrong with that. I'm not up in the morning to have breakfast, so. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and mean, it's just like it seems like. I don't know. It's not that weird, but it almost feels like too much effort to pour yourself a bowl of cereal and is that where you are get milk and then get a spoon and sit down and spoon it all in your mouth like just stick your hand in a box i like i will do that from time to time just in passing like if i'm going by the fridge i'll maybe reach up and just grab a handful yeah of a cereal and then just eat that Mm mm-hmm but I wouldn't go through the trouble of taking the box and sitting down with it. I do. And eating it like chips. I definitely do. I don't... There's nothing wrong with it. Yeah. I'm not reprimanding you. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just... I feel like if I'm going to have more than a handful, I want milk in my cereal. Really? Yeah. Cinnamon... Ch- or cinnamon uh, life is definitely, definitely, definitely a, like a chip cereal. I, that's one, even as a kid, I almost never ate with milk mm-hmm. because they're squares. Yeah. You know, so they're dangerous like Captain Crunch and, uh, and you know, same as, same as any cereal, but they get it. They're the same, uh, build mm-hmm. as like checks. Mm-hmm. So they get soggy, you know, when you get halfway done eating them and they're just, they're just better. Like little, uh, like little triscuits or whatever, <laughs> <laughs> little cinnamon triscuits. <laughs> I'm surprised I haven't tried making a triscuit cereal. Yeah, but the, the typical triscuit flavor is like salt. <laughs> <laughs> you could leave the salt off and replace it with uh, uh, sugar. Well, or but you cinnamon could, sugar. Yeah, but you could say like, uh, like mini wheats and stuff or like triscuits well they are but what i'm saying is like the triscuit people brand they should have been looking at mini wheats by now yeah and thinking we can get in on this (laughs) this is a market where we can uh we can maybe gain some traction maybe have a big name Uh uh-huh we start spreading the word hey do you hear triscuits got a new cereal (laughs) (laughs) Uh, word on the street, man. The buzz would be off the charts. I like uh, I like mini wheats too, but I was always um, frosted mini wheats are like the shit. Yeah. But it sucks that they're not equally frosted. Mm-hmm. You know, so it was always like finding gold when you would get that one that was just like caked in yeah. frosting or or whatever it was. Those I would like to let, like, sit for a while. A little bit, yeah. Because I hated how those things were fucking intense. The intensity of the crunch on mini wheats is just, like, too much when you first pour them. You you have to allow them to absorb some milk. You know, they had, like, frosted mini wheats, but then they also just had, like... 
I don't I don't know. They weren't. They were just like, it was like just wheat cereal, and it was mini wheats, but they were like really long. Yeah. And you had to pour them in and then like break them up with your <laughs> yeah. spoon. Like, why the extra work? <laughs> I don't know. Maybe some people, some people thought it was fun to go it's through like, like logs the, of yeah. wheat in your cereal. You get to like pretend you're a beaver and I guess build like a little dam in your cereal bowl. Yeah, I don't know. Snow covered logs. <laughs> 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 Kellogg's beaver logs. <laughs> Man, truthfully though, I pretty much I like. I like almost any cereal. Cereal is really, I mean, it's a it's a great product. It's tough if you go to the store and you have to buy one box of cereal. Yeah, it is because you always see others that you could just as easily have gone with. Mm-hmm. You know, it never feels like there's one right decision to be made. And like, but I would say that my favorite cereal of all time, uh, from when I was a child to now, is Count Chocula. Really. Well, actually, you know what? Um, if I could have the old formula back, they've done something to them. Yeah. You ever have that happen with a food you like? I'm pretty sure they've done something to peanut butter crunch. Okay. It just, like, you know it doesn't taste the same yep. way it did when you were a kid. Yeah. And, like, your sense of taste is very particular. Mm-hmm. I feel like you can remember... And you know if something has been altered, you know. Uh, I think the worst one is Trix cereal. Ever since they uh, went to balls instead of fruit shapes, Mm -hmm. it's just, it's not good. It's not a good cereal anymore. I've heard people argue where they're like, no, it's just, you think it's different because the shapes are different. But I think that you're probably right. Yeah. I feel like over the years, something has been altered in the recipe. Yeah. And it is, it's not the same. I don't eat tricks anymore. That's for sure. Uh, there's a cereal uh, called um, O's. Have you ever had O's? Mm-mm. It's fucking delicious. It's my, it's my dad's favorite cereal. But they're basically like oversized like Cheerios. Mm-hmm. Okay. And they have like a... It's like a honey flavor... But then, you know, the, uh, in like honey bunches of oats, like the little clusters that yeah. are in there, mm-hmm. the O's are like stuffed with the honey nut clusters. That sounds good. And it's, it's really, really good. It's a good cereal. And I do like honey bunches of oats too. I do too. And but, I did when I was a kid, but it always felt like old people cereal. Yeah. But I still liked it. Yeah. I, the ratio, the, for me, the ratio of like corn flakes to almonds and uh cinnamon clusters and mm-hmm. whatever else they put in it is far too great yeah they put far too many corn flakes in honey bunches of oats like calm your shit yeah give me some more nut clusters i always felt that way about the raisins and raisin bran yeah i always wanted more raisins. more raisins which is like weird but it's like weird for a kid. I liked raisin bran as a kid, but even as a kid, I was just like, "Why aren't there more raisins yeah. in this?" It's just bran sh- flakes. You're shaking the box up a little bit, hoping that like your pour will be good. Yeah. No, it never works out that way. I liked a uh, raisin bran crunch a lot. That's good anything, too. anything with those those cinnamon honey nut clusters or whatever. Those are that's that's a good cereal. I never liked original Wheaties. No, I thought those were very. Those were like. Those were too, too bland. That's grandpa, like, grandma and grandpa <laughs> cereal. Not grandpa cereal, that's grandma cereal. Grandma cereal. Yeah. But and I like... Uh, total. Total. <laughs> <laughs> what was the other one? Um, oh, God. It's like a... I feel like it has nut in the name. Grand, grape nut? Grape nuts, is that... <laughs> grape nuts. Yeah, grape nut Probably. grape nuts. I, and it was like... Like eating concrete. Yeah, almost. grape nuts is is weird that I don't think I've ever had it, but the commercials for it would be they'd pour a bowl and then pour milk onto it and lift it up and like the milk wouldn't even drip off the <laughs> <Yeah>. spoon. <laughs> it was just like it was like grits or yeah. something. It was disgusting. Have you ever had I'm looking back uh, behind Bender here. Have you ever had Bootios? I've not had a box of Bootios. Maybe I'll 
I have to go and buy some new bootios soon, so yeah. maybe, maybe I'll pick you up a box. Okay. You can try them. Yeah, I'll, I'll eat some bootios. <laughs> They're very, uh, very similar to Lucky Charms, yeah. which is another all-time favorite of mine. I do like Lucky Charms. Never, I, I like the marshmallows in Lucky Charms. Never understood the people that just wanted, like, all marshmallow. No. It needs to have that, that other crunch in there. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I feel the same way. Yeah. Uh, I loved Oreo O's when they were a thing. I don't think you can get them anymore. I Did you ever have had those? those? Man, no. it was just like an Oreo cookie in a bowl. It was awesome. Hmm. How about, uh, what else? Um, there was, uh, French Toast Crunch. Did you ever have that? Yeah, French Toast Crunch is better than Cinnamon Toast Crunch. I like Cinnamon Toast Crunch, too. I was always a fan of that. I liked I like Cinnamon Toast Crunch, but uh, I think it was a little gritty. The cereal was because it it had like it had a very the fine dust. the dust the cinnamon powder that was all over them. It made made for like a gritty eating experience. That's about, why I preferred French Toast Crunch. That makes me think of another another topic on cereal here. Yeah. It's like horrible end of the bowl cereals. And I think mini wheats falls into that category yep. because you would get like the shreds. Yep. It's just like a ball of shredded uh-huh. wheat and it wasn't it wasn't good. I only was... cereal a, a good indicate an indication of a good cereal is if you can eat the whole thing and have just milk that you can drink at the end with no floaties. Yeah. <coughs> um what would you think of this? Have you heard of this movie, uh, Man vs. What is it? Man vs. Snake, I think. Um, about this guy who plays this arcade game called Nibbler. Did I tell you about that? I think I've seen the preview. It's just like Snake, like you would get on a, on a Nokia cell phone. Kind of, but like the original version. Right, like, right. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, there's one point in the movie where, or in the documentary, and he's like playing this game in his living room trying to break the high score and he's got like a bunch of friends over and like they're just kind of going around the room shooting the shit with each other and like one of the guy's friends is talking and he's like hey man you know what they should make they should make a product called cereal milk where it's milk but it tastes like the cereal has been in it for a while and these companies could sell it like you could have you could have like you could have like Captain Crunch cereal milk. You could have Lucky Charm cereal milk. Would you buy something like that and drink it? Because they make like Nestle Quick, like mm-hmm. banana milk and like strawberry milk and shit. So, would you get one that was I, like? I'm a. I think I'm a purist, and I'm like white milk, chocolate milk. Like that's it. Like we've been buying almond milk a mm-hmm. lot lately, and I don't even prefer. I don't even like the vanilla almond milk. I just like original i can put that stuff in cereal but i cannot drink a glass of almond milk it's just not it, it's I can. not it's not the same but no, i can do it i just don't like when i'm if i try i'm just wanting it to be regular milk yeah we just get it because you know like we don't need milk a lot and yeah. it lasts a lot longer than regular milk so yeah it's you know that's why we we've been buying when we do buy milk that's what we buy but that's only that's the only reason yeah i i mean i i don't mind it but yeah like i don't care for the vanilla kind Mm -hmm. or whatever so i don't know i don't think if there was a cereal milk i don't know that i would buy it i just feel like milk is such a touchy thing to mess with yeah you know it's already sort of a uh (laughs) like has such a limited shelf life sort yeah. of you know so i just feel like putting other things into it just kind of is weird i can see that yeah i don't know if i would buy it myself yeah even like of a cereal i really enjoyed you know i don't know that i'd want to drink like a whole 16 ounce bottle right of milk that tasted like you know it had been used for you know 
Count Chocula. Because you just want it's... to eat Count Chocula. Yeah. Then. Like, yeah. what's the point? I feel like I brought this up on, like, a podcast we did a long time ago, but my favorite cereal of all time, like, and I, I didn't mention it because, you know, it's, it's such a rarity, like, you cannot get it anymore. It was the, the Batman cereal from the original movie uh-huh. with Michael Keaton. So, well, sorry. If you're about to correct me, I know there was a Batman movie of the anime or the uh, the Adam West series before that. Yeah, I know that. So if you're like, well, that's not the original Bat, <laughs> I know, I know. <laughs> We're talking like real fucking Batman, Michael Keaton Batman. There was a serial that came out like in conjunction with the movie, and it had the logo on the box. It was just like a black box with the logo. And it was incredible. And I wish that I could have some. I, even if I could, um, it would be from like the late 80s. Yeah. And I'm sure it would not taste good. No. Someone actually brought a box of it in on um, Comic Book Men. I know. I saw, I saw that episode. Yeah. And they ate it. And they were yeah. like, gross. I know. <laughs> it made me so sad because I was hoping that they would be like, ah, it's actually still pretty good. Yeah. And then maybe I'd hunt down a box for myself, but... After seeing that, I was like, well, it's, it's not worth it. Yeah. Man. Uh, I love... I think... I think as an adult, I've grown to... I mean, I always liked them, but uh, I very much enjoy Frosted Flakes as sort of a simple, you know, just kind of like... Start your day cereal. Yeah. So we have Frosted Flakes at work, so sometimes, uh, you know, sometimes I'll have a bowl in the morning. Are they the little boxes? Like the No, we get, like, generic brand and big bags. Oh, okay. But they still, I mean, it still tastes pretty good. I feel like it's hard to fuck up Frosted Flakes. <laughs> Did you ever have uh, cereal at school, like, for lunch? Yeah, we had little Kellogg's, uh, you know, single serving, yeah. whatevers. And then you'd... You, like, make a bowl out of the box itself. Uh-huh. You yeah. just would, like, peel off the top and then pour your milk in and then... Yeah. Yeah, we had that. Um, I would get it sometimes. I like... Uh, my favorite to get in that sort of scenario is uh, Pops. I love Pops. Like, Corn Pops? Yeah. Yeah. Like, Kellogg's Pops. Just Pops? The yellow box. Yeah. Well, I mean, I guess they were corn pops, but they eventually just called them pops. They like, just call them pops now. I think so. The yellow box, and they were like, I always called them corn pops. Corn pops. I don't think they're corn pops anymore. Maybe they are, but it says because pops thought, real big on the box. Because I thought it was like the cool way of saying it. Like at the end of the commercial was, I don't know if you remember these. Like the, it'd be some wacky caper happens over the course of 30 seconds uh-huh. that leads to the kid getting his corn pops but the ending slogan was always i gotta have my pops yeah i got my yeah that cereal yeah but i always thought that was them saying like this is the cool way to say it it's actually called corn pops i think oh well i mean i i always said the cool way i always just <laughs> called them pops <laughs> I guess I was cooler than you as a I kid. Guess you were. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, gotta have my pops. Yeah, I like uh, that's that's what I would get at school or whatever if it was available. Um. Well, that's that's some good cereal talk. Yeah. Thanks for that, Andrew. Yeah, good cereal. I feel like we we uh, poured your topic. Uh, in a big bowl. <laughs> just ate it right <laughs> up. Right <laughs> up. <laughs> and now, now that we've uh, finished off our uh, cereal for breakfast, yeah. let's move on to the next topic for lunch here. Uh huh. This comes from Justin Ortiz. He is the two time uh, Two Sweet Mix CD champion. Yeah. He just won this week again. I know. And I Good for him. sent that off to him today. Right on. And that was your playlist. Yeah, it was. Yeah, it yeah, was. it was my 2016 top song playlist. Some good stuff. Yeah. Some stuff that I had not listened to, so... Did you listen while you were creating um, the CD? 
I listened while I was driving around a little bit. Yeah. Um, because I had to download probably about half of the songs on there. Mm-hmm. Um, <clears throat> but I've got the playlist saved, and now I can listen to it myself. Nice. And, uh, yeah, so that's fun. Justin wants to know, what are our favorite topical agents for various maladies and disorders? I don't even know how to answer this question. Well, let's say you get some poison ivy. (laughs) Do you go with, uh, like, the uh, traditional pink calamine lotion? Or do you use, like, the clear stuff? Like the off-brand Kroger? I so rarely use topical ointments. (laughs) 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 Um, it's not... How did he word it? What is the... the... (laughs) Disorder. For various maladies and disorders. disorders. Okay. Do you ever use head-on? No. For a headache? No. You remember that stuff? No. The fucking infomercials would always be like, they'd say it a million times. Head on, apply directly to the forehead. Apply directly to the forehead. Head on, apply directly to the forehead. It's just like, it looked like a glue stick. (laughs) And people would just like rub it across their forehead. It It was supposed to be like, you know, a topical agent for your headaches. So you didn't have to take uh, Tylenol or aspirin or something. No, I always pop pills. Okay. Um, I will say, I very recently, actually, in the last week or so, Lindsay has um, concocted this face mask that she found online. And I don't have, like, the worst acne problem, but... It's nice to use. I have a nice clean face, you know. So I've been using it with her, and it's, uh, well, the great thing is it's a it's a product that she bought at like Sephora or whatever, and it was like thirty dollars for like this little you know little whatever tub of it. I guess I don't know, but she was looking online and found the recipe and you can like buy all of the ingredients at like the vitamin shop and just fucking make it yourself and it costs like twelve dollars you know and you get like way more than you would get spending forty five dollars at sephora so anyways it's um it's aztec powder uh clay powder aztec clay powder and tea tree oil although you can leave that out if you prefer which is probably a good idea because it burns um and organic apple cider vinegar Mm -hmm. and then like a little bit of water Hmm. and you you like measure it out and you mix it up and it forms like kind of a, a mud and you put it on your face and you leave it on for like 10 minutes or so and it's like an intense experience you can you can feel it like pulsating yeah like pulsating on your face and it's almost like uh i imagine it's as it's drying you know it's like pulling your face but then your face is trying to stretch back yeah so you know i i assume that whole sensation is you know like supposed it's kind of like a it's like a wrinkle reducer because it's literally kind of flexing your face Mm -hmm. you know um but yeah, I've been using that. Do you rinse it off or do you peel it off? Rinse. You okay. can you scrub it. Um because it does dry, you know, mm-hmm. it dries a little bit. Yeah. Um But yeah, I've, I've been doing that, you know. That's a I guess that's a topical thing that, that I That is use. topical. Yeah. Also um like a a charcoal face wash. Uh, is really cool it makes you it makes your face feel minty afterwards it's it's interesting and it's cool because it's black so it's Mm -hmm. like i don't know it's just fun to like put a weird colored substance on your face you know it's just like this black bottle and you squirt on this black all over your hand Mm -hmm. i use that stuff i guess other than that i really i seriously rarely 
I never use topical. Wait, it's... Well, that's, it's topical. Yeah. It sounds like you're using topical ointment on the reg. Yeah. You know? Within... Started within the last, like, two or three weeks. Yeah. Very, very recent uh, addition. Well, I hope you keep up the practice. Yeah, me too. It sounds wonderful. It's pretty nice. Maybe I'll have to try it. Yeah, it makes you look real pretty. Huh. I like Tiger Balm. I've uh, never... It's kind of like Icy Hot. Yeah. You know? And it's got a cool name. It does. It does. I, I know I know of it. Mm-hmm. I've never used it, though. Yeah. If you've got an ache or a pain or something and uh, bruised your leg because you weren't paying attention and maybe you walked into the uh, the dresser or uh, <laughs> uh, fell up the stairs, fell up the stairs, kicked the corner of the coffee table when you're yeah. walking by, stuff like that, stupid human shit. Maybe know? I should. Uh, maybe I should get some of that though. I I get. Uh... Like Charlie horses behind my knees from oh. standing around all day. It'd be good for it. Maybe that would help. Be another good <clears throat> topical agent <laughs> yeah, to, to add to your to arsenal. <laughs> <laughs> um, a topical thing I don't like is I do not particularly care for um, witch hazel when getting tattooed, hmm. which is weird. Why not? I don't know, but. I don't like I don't like getting it and then having somebody go back in. Mm-hmm. I guess it's fine like at the end of a tattoo because I know it kind of calms the it kind of it helps to calm the redness and then you yeah. can get decent pictures of it, you know. Um, but you know, your wife has done it a couple times where she'll, you know, she needs to take a break or it's time for a break or whatever and she'll mm-hmm. spray some on there. And then when we go back in to, to get started again, she tattoos, it's, it's much more excruciating for me. So I believe last... it's, it's also a, a natural, uh, uh, antimicrobial. Yeah. So if you're taking a break, I think then that kind of safeguards it for, you know, that, that period where right. it might be exposed well, the last couple of times I've been tattooed, I've refused witch hazel during during breaks mm. because I don't like it. Mm. Granted, I don't particularly like getting tattooed yeah. anymore. Yeah. I used to, but now I'm like, fuck this. <laughs> Just put it on me. Just get it over with. I'm going to I'm going to finish my chest soon. I'm just going to I'm just going to book an entire day. Yeah. And just suck it up and go and fucking do it because yeah, I want, I'm sick of not having this thing finished. I want Lindsay to try to rework my chest. Mm-hmm. And I think she can do it and I think it'll be amazing and I think it's going to suck. Mm-hmm. <laughs> maybe we could go on the same day. Yeah, maybe. And suffer together. Yeah. I'm trying to, I'm going to, this year, my goal this year, and uh, I'm going to bring it up once the new shop is open and everything, but my goal this year is to have Jesse do a full back piece oh wow on me what do you have in mind uh i would like her to do her version of the stock i think oh wow that'd be really cool because i want something i you know i've had this idea for a while but i want something beautiful and Mm. monstrous yeah and you know i don't want to like take away from how creative and talented your wife is but you know there's there's just there's just certain designs you connect with yeah. and Fiona Staples design of the stock is just like it's mind blowing to me it's so simple mm-hmm. and it's so awesome and i just think like it's an amazing character yeah so and i think Jesse can really do something like fucking rad with it so mm-hmm. i'm picturing like You've seen, you know, Dale, you've seen Dale's back. Yeah. Very much the same setup. Mm-hmm. Um, but in that space where like Dale's girl has like her kimono and everything that comes up, yeah. it would be all of the stock's hands kind of coming up. And, uh, I envision her sort of like maybe holding a skull mm-hmm. and sort of studying this skull and then have, you know, like a couple other things in her hands or whatever. Uh, but 
yeah, that that character to me is just. I mean, it's she's a monster, but it's she's just a beautiful character. So, from Saga, yeah, from, from Saga. comic book. If you're not familiar with who the stalk is, you could find many pictures if you just type that in on Google. Yeah. Or your web, uh, uh, fucking what do you call that? Browser. No. Search engine. Yeah. That's what I was looking yeah. for. I don't know why anybody would use any search engine other than Google, but... Well, some people are all about Bing. I don't know why. I've never used anything. Well, I have. I used to use Yahoo, uh-huh. like, way, way back in the day. But, I mean, ever since Google has gained prominence, that's pretty much what I've used. I don't know if you can still use Lycos or Ask Jeeves. <laughs> I just don't, I don't, I don't, I don't see them. It's, when, when you have something that the product is what you refer to that activity as, Mm -hmm. that's the product you use. Like, like, we say Band-Aids, even though Band-Aid is a brand, you Mm -hmm. know, it's like, when you want to search something on the internet, what do you say? Why don't you Google it? Yeah. Like, why, why even try, like, Bing? What the fuck? Why even try to come up with a search engine? Eh, just just Bing it. Just Bing it. <laughs> How big of a dork would you be if you told someone, just Bing just it? Just Bing it. It makes no like, sense Like, what are you talking me? about? Why would you, tr- why? You okay. know, Bing, the search engine, you, oh, you mean you want me to Google it? <laughs> <laughs> Oh, uh, yeah, so, I don't know, Tiger Balm, that's good stuff. Yeah, there you go. I don't know about any other ointments that are, like, really favorable for me. I will use Calamine Lotion if I get, uh, Poison Ivy, but I don't like to, because I don't like all the pink goo all over the place. So if I can track down some clear calamine lotion, I like that. You know what? Um, I'm going to say that's that's a that's a major key, that's a big discovery, the clear calamine lotion. Yeah. That really helped people. So whoever came up with that, thumbs up. <laughs> you did a good job. You you you're a genius whoever you are because that is that is seeing, uh, that's seeing a product that everyone wanted and didn't realize it until they had it. Yep. Because everyone for the longest time probably just thought, well, fuck me. I've got <laughs> poison ivy. Now I've got to look like an idiot with this pink stuff all over my arms and legs. Uh-huh. And then someone one day saw someone with calamine lotion all over their arms and they're just like, you know what? Why, why the fuck can't we, we can make this clear there's there's got to be a way yeah and they found a way to do it some scientist saw that and he was like i am going to create some clear calamine lotion and i'm gonna sell a shitload of it (laughs) (laughs) in fact i wonder why they still sell the pink stuff if you've got the alternative yeah like do you think there are people who get really jazzed about when they get poison (laughs) ivy and it's like yay now i gotta put this Pink lotion stuff. I all think over I've only had poison ivy once in my entire life, and I don't think I used calamine lotion. You just let it go. I don't know if I would just let it go, but what else would you I, use? I don't. I don't know. I don't know what else to use. I, I feel was, like that's the only thing. That I you was use. young. If I if I got it, I was really little, and I do not remember. But I think I've only had it once. I've never heard of an alternative, like. Maybe I maybe we maybe we had clear calamine lotion and I just don't I just don't have any recollection of uh, having pink goop on my person. <laughs> I always heard that going to the swimming pool was good if you got poison ivy because of like chlorine and stuff. Yeah, it would like chlorine. dry it out. Yeah, that makes sense. And also uh, another uh, poison ivy quick tip <laughs> is. And this would be more of a quick fact, is that once you've, once you've contracted, once you've been uh, beset with poison ivy, um, and you've been poisoned by it, <laughs> it will not spread from scratching it. That's really? an old wives' tale. Uh-huh. 
the only way it spreads is from the oil that gets on your skin initially when you make contact with the uh, the poison ivy plant. Uh -huh. So if you are out working in the yard, you go inside, get rid of everything you were working in, and you know wash it immediately because if you get any poison ivy on you in that process and it gets on your clothes, um, you could take those off, put them to the side, and then go back to work in the yard the next day and get more poison ivy by putting your clothes back on if it has like the oils on it. Huh. So that is kind of a quick tip. Yeah, there you go. Don't get poison. I don't know. Don't get poison ivy. Wash your clothes after you work in the yard or you go into the woods. Yeah. Save yourself the trouble. Yeah. But if you get it, take a shower and don't worry. Uh huh. Don't scratch it though because it's not good for you. No. You don't want to get an infection. Right. But it's not going to spread it. Right. There well, you go. There's this has been super botany. <laughs> <laughs> super botany. <laughs> I'm so happy that, like, we have a band name that anything we do, we can just throw super in front of it. Like, it just pleases me to no end. It's great. We have another super topic from Justin. We do. Um, what is this? If you could have one move, if you could have one move from a video game, what would it be? So I guess one, one sort of power, yeah. um, thing like that from a video game. And he's left it wide open, so yeah. it doesn't even have to be a fighting game. It can just be any move right. that any character has done in any video game. I think this is kind of a, this, I've been thinking about this, it's kind of a, tricky question because I don't want to answer with something that can just be a superpower. Yeah. You know, like I was, I was thinking, I was like, oh, well, it'd be really cool to have like the warp strike from Final Fantasy 15, but like that's really just teleporting. Like it's not, you know, it's cool, but, but you have to have that, that you have to have a particular, uh, I don't know. I just watched King's Glaive. Yeah. So I don't know if in the game you have to have like this particular weapon to throw and then teleport to it. You can do it with any weapon you have. Oh, any weapon? Well, okay. I mean like any bladed weapon because he has guns and stuff. But, oh, okay. You know, you throw whatever. And, okay. Because you know, in in the movie, all I ever see them do it with is this one particular the one style sword. of sword. So, well, I mean, it could be. I I haven't even picked up Final Fantasy again, but you can. You know, switch between your your melee weapons. Uh, if you warp to like a point, you know, you, if you there's like points in battle that you can warp to that will automatically regenerate your MP. Mm -hmm. So it kind of gets you out of the fray or whatever, and then you yeah. can go back in. Um, so if I have like my javelin equipped, but then I warp to a warp point, it might be the sword. That he throws and sticks in, but then when you warp strike back at somebody, he strikes with the javelin or, okay. or whatever. Um, I haven't paid that much attention, so it could very well be the the one, the one okay. sword. I was just gonna say if it if it was just the one, that would be a very particular style it would, of warping. Yeah. But I it don't would. know. That is, you still get kind of like, you know, shades of Nightcrawler. Exactly. Just, yeah. You know. Yeah. Bamf. <laughs> badass motherfucker is what I think every time yeah um I don't know it's so this is a good question because it's so hard mm -hmm. especially like you said if you're trying to not if you're trying to choose something that can't also be just a generic what would you choose for your favorite superpower right you know something unique to the world of video games or, you know, I guess, a video game in particular. I'm trying to think, too. You try and cross certain games off the list immediately, like anything coming from Marvel. I'm not even going to go there, much. because that's, yeah. that's your super superheroes, superpowers. So... But, you know, but that doesn't that doesn't exclude, like, Marvel versus Capcom, because you have that whole Capcom side of characters. Yeah. You know... Um. Man, I, I think it would be cool 
to have scorpions get over here move. That would be neat. You know? Would you just use it for stuff around the house? Yeah. <laughs> you know, when I'm going to grab a box of Captain Crunch, like, yeah. get over here! <laughs> You'd have to be able to perform it with a gentle touch, though, so you didn't destroy the box True. and get cereal like all over your True. apartment. No, everything in my house is just going to have holes in it <laughs> from where the spear goes through it, and then I pull it to me. If you could learn to finesse it, yeah, that would be cool. Yeah. You know, take the, uh, you know, you just take the, you take the spearhead off of it, and you add, like, a little weight, you know? That way, when you shoot it out, the weight will tie around things, and then mm-hmm. you pull it to yourself and untie it, you know? Or you could add one of those uh, sticky hands that you get out of <laughs> yeah. uh, vending machines. Yeah. <laughs> Just get over here. <laughs> Just <laughs> comes back at you. But it drops halfway towards you. Yeah, because they never... Yeah, they just never... They never adhere properly. Right. You know? mm. Hmm. What if you just had, um, like, Mario's flying hat from Mario 64? Is that a move or a power? I guess that's a power. An upgrade. Yeah. His, I guess a move would be more like his... His jumps. Yeah. His triple jump. Yeah. That'd be a cool move to do. You can you can literally do that, though, if but, you try. Well, not that high. No, not that high, but... You know, if someone saw you going down the street... Woo! <laughs> 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 like the top of a house. Yeah. <laughs> That's true. That would be, and that'd you be make, fun. And you make... I think it'd be cool if you choose this move... It also, like, makes the same sound from the game when you're doing yeah. it. Like, in the real world. Uh-huh. So you're running, it's just like... Yeah. Like, yeah! What? <laughs> Yahoo! Yeah. <laughs> Holy shit, did you see that? that? That would be pretty funny. Could you... You could also add, like, when you get the triple, you know, where he, like, does, like, the front flip or whatever. Um, you could also... You can dive out of it like yeah. he does in, in Mario, and that, like, gets you greater distance. Yeah. That would be that would be fun. I, it's hard because uh, you know you want to think of something that's not typical. Like I don't just want uh, a sure you can or anything. You know, like you don't. I feel like it'd be cool to um, do like the. You know, just curl up into a ball, like uh, in Metroid. Yeah. And just roll all over the place. Mm-hmm. That'd be pretty neat. Yeah. And I think it'd be different than... I guess it'd be a little different than Sonic's. Because I feel like his... Maybe there's not as much control. Yeah, no, there's not. He's going a little too fast. Yeah. I do not like Sonic games. None of them? I'm not... I mean, like Sonic Adventure... I mean, Sonic Adventure 2 Battle had that special place for every kid that had a GameCube. But... But even that game, you know, let's be honest, you get past that snowboarding through the city level and then you're just like, what is this game? (laughs) 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 They blew their loads so fast in that game. Yeah. You know, because you had all the levels where, like, you had to, like, you played as Knuckles, but you had to go, like, scavenger hunting for things, and it was like, what? Yeah. I don't know, I'm just not, like quick you know like quick on the uptake with Mm -hmm. sonic it's it's i always get a momentum going and then get hit by an enemy like every time i was thinking metroid but i was thinking about her you know her cannon which isn't really a move but just like being able to charge it and being able to switch it to different powers and things like i mean if you're fighting things yeah Mm mm-hmm I'm trying to think about, like, everyday yeah. living just in my life. Oh, uh, well, no. Eh. I love... One of my favorite Mortal Kombat characters is Smoke. Mm-hmm. And, uh... He has a move. It'd be similar to Scorpion's, but it would be better. So I think it would be cool yeah. if uh, you had the move... Smoke has a move where he throws a little like a smoke ball at your opponent's feet 
and it hits the ground and opens a portal and they fall like right in front of him so you can like do that and then uppercut the shit out of them while they're falling yeah so that like practical use you know anything in the house you just like throw this little <laughs> smoke ball at it and then just hold your hands out and it'll yeah. just fall right into your hands you know yeah that'd be cool that would be i like i like smoke a lot and then his little teleport you know again kind of a basic power but just being able to become smoke and like mm-hmm. move through things is He's always he's always fun. He was my my go to in Mortal Kombat Nine. Mm-hmm. I'm trying to think of other like unique video game characters and moves that no one else really does. It's tough. Yeah, because moves are so. Uh, I don't know. They're they're so uh, recycled. Oftentimes, even I mean, there usually are some variations, but uh-huh. hmm. I don't know. Think of anything else? I don't know. It's it's I. I'm trying to look at like video games that I've got yeah. around me, around me right now, just because <clears throat> we're talking moves, right? Not like a suit or something. No. Um, you know, I know it's possible in real life, but uh, I like like um, you know. In plenty of games, you can, like, wall jump. Yeah. Or, you know, like... You, like in, Especially in Tomb Raider, a lot of times you'll have to jump towards a wall and she kind of catches herself and then skips up it to the yeah. next ledge. I sure as hell can't do that myself. It's possible, but extremely difficult. But I think it would be cool to just be able to. Yeah. Like, no matter what, you yeah. know? That made me think of, like, some of the shit, you know, the character at Ezio, mm-hmm. or Connor, or, you know, whoever from Assassin's Creed. But that's all kind of real-world parkour stuff. Right. So, it's not not 100% particular to those games. But... Um, Is there anything Link does that no one else can do? Uh, Not really. I mean, aside from his, like, spin attack, which, you know, is, like, doesn't really have any any real-world application. <laughs> yeah. He doesn't really... Cause every, almost everything Link does relies on, you know, an item that he has. Really. How about, like... How about Kirby? The ability to just like suck things up. And also like and suck just, in air and, and then just like and float. Inflate. That'd yeah, be kind of uh, neat. Yeah, I'd float. Yeah, that would be kind of cool. Just become a balloon and. Yeah. Uh, you know, it's not a. It's not like a. It's only part of Star Fox because of Super Smash Brothers, but his like move where he just dashes forward really fast. Yeah. Like. That would be kind of cool, because it's not really teleporting. It's not like the Flash, where you can run really far. It's just like you can go from you could go from here to there. It, it's like small world application. You need to go from the kitchen to the living room. <laughs> Boom! You just dash. There. Yeah, you just go. Like, been sitting there in a meeting for three hours, and you really have to take a poop. <laughs> Boom! You're there. You take a poop. <laughs> you could dash, like... Out of the office and then down the hallway. Yeah, yeah, exactly. You have to sort of stop and recharge. Yeah, but only for a second. Even in the game, he only has to stop for that split second, and then he can do it again. There'd be like a maximum distance you could go. Right. You know, you can't 
dash all the way across the field. No. Well, I wonder if you could do you could do like you know ten yards at a time or something. Yeah. You know, get down a whole football field in a hundred or in you know whatever twenty dashes. Or yeah. Some. Whatever. That would be it is. too bad. That'd be kind of cool. Yeah, I mean, you, then you could become a pro football player. <laughs> you know. Yeah. No one would get you. No. Make lots of money. Yep. I don't know if they'd outwall you though. They might. But I feel like that'd be discrimination. Yeah. If you're the only person born with the ability to dash, and like, well, you can't play. Why not? Right. Because I was born this way. <laughs> hmm. Well. Yeah. Sounds a little. Sounds a little, uh, you know, discriminatory to me. That's right. What would professional sports do with like the first mutant? That's a good question. If there, if there's only one, you know, and they really want to play sports, but they're just so much better yeah. than everyone, you couldn't just tell them no, could you? Um, I, I don't feel know. like they would just, they could they. But, like, could they regulate it, though? Would that be also discrimination? I mean... If they're not taking any performance-enhancing drugs, it's like, this person uh can run, like, 100 miles an hour. Like, what do you... What do you do? But But at that point, though, but it does become, like... Well, who's ever going to beat them? I You're not. Yeah. You won't. If, like, if, you know, somebody who can dash or run or jump really high or whatever, you know, wants to play football, that team is never going to lose. So it's just like, it just, it automatically sucks all the fun. <laughs> I mean, I hate football anyways, but it would automatically suck all of the fun and excitement out of football because every game this team plays and every Rose Bowl and every Super Bowl and every bowl, it's just going to be this team wins because they've got this one dude that all they have to do is get the ball to him and it's game over. So maybe that becomes the entire strategy then. You'd have to make sure this guy never touched the ball or else you're just going to lose. Every other team in the NFL has to figure out how to... They have to retool their entire strategy to just block this one dude yeah that would be weird because like like you said if he gets the ball that's that's going to be an automatic score right the other team so your entire strategy would have to be based around making sure that he never touched the ball that would be maybe i maybe i'd watch football (laughs) (laughs) imagine when that team finally... Because I feel like it'd be a while before anyone figured it out. Oh, yeah. So, when someone finally did beat this team, it might be what the entire league centered around for, like, you know, 10 years. It was like, is anyone... I mean, because imagine all he has to do is be the quarterback. Yeah. And the ball gets hiked to him. <laughs> you know, how many times do quarterbacks get blitzed? Like, it... You know, and and whenever they do, it's because they're holding the ball, looking for somebody to pass to, and they don't notice the guy coming around the back. You know, there's also the safety issue of if he hits someone running a hundred miles an hour. Yeah, you know, if someone did happen to get back there, but he's just about to take off. I wonder how long, if if this guy goes from like zero to one hundred after he takes one step, or if he has to kind of build up into it. That'd make a difference. Yeah. Because if it takes a few steps, then you still have an opportunity. But if he can just go from standing to running 100 miles an hour, that probably would be... Uh, then I, Well, then I think it would become a safety issue, and I would, I would imagine he would be... They wouldn't let him play after that because they're, he's endangering the safety of other players. Yeah. You know... Well, then you could you could he could still argue discrimination and stuff, he but could. I you know I would have to imagine in the real world, you know, mm-hmm. even if like I supported the mutant because it's a mutant and it's fucking cool, <laughs> like even if I was behind him, 
I'm just imagining in the real world, they would somehow they would find a way to to prevent him from playing because of the safety of other players. I think everyone, I they'd probably have uh, a strike. Yeah. No one else would want to play against this guy. That too. Yeah. They'd be like, sorry, it's just unrealistic. Right. It makes the game pointless. We can't. We're not going to do this. We're we're wasting our time. Yeah. And then, hopefully, hopefully the mutant would realize, I'm just making this. Just ruining it for everyone. Yeah. Just because I want to play. Right. No one can touch me. Maybe that should be. Good maybe enough. then he starts. Maybe then he creates a brand new sport himself, where it becomes the sport is what your strategy was. You know, it becomes how do we beat the mutant Mm -hmm. you know what do we got to do to like win i don't know he plays like basketball or something instead yeah maybe he doesn't maybe maybe he can't play football but what if you know you've got a guy who can run 100 miles an hour but then you put him on a basketball court then what do you do yeah because then he'd still have to be able to dribble the ball yep 100 miles an hour yeah which and he'd be have to be able to shoot yeah he'd have to be able to like actually make you know make baskets be like maybe football's not the sport for you yeah try basketball or you can play baseball i guess baseball would be i think you'd have the same sort of like safety issue as football like running into somebody on the base yeah but you would almost they would almost have a little bit more of a level playing field because maybe he can't hit every ball. Mm-hmm. You know, you know if the other team's got a really good hitter, they're scoring runs. You never know unless he's just like running around the entire diamond catching balls <laughs> and whatever. But you still have to be able to catch. Yeah. So and if someone hits a grounder, it's not like you can just pick it up and you know you got to pick him up and get him out. Football is not the sport for this guy. No. That's what we figured out. Yeah. <laughs> there are other things there are other games you can play. After much deliberation, <laughs> we have decided that football is not the right sport for this mutant. Yeah. So try other sports. Yeah. Maybe you'll find a better fit. Well, I think that's all of the uh that's it for questions from people. Yeah. More than normal. Yeah. We're, getting, we're building. We're getting there. Yep. So thanks to Andrew and Justin for really those two those two dudes are always keeping up. Holding it down. Holding it down for, you know, the other 86 people in the divorce club. I wonder, I like, when I post in there, I wonder if, um, because it shows you how many people have seen the shit you post. Like it says, seen by six. Yeah. When I asked for topics for tonight. Right. So, like, what's going on there? Because we have, like, 80 people or something, so... Why... why? Because if you're in the divorce club, you should get a notification that there's been a post. Unless people have just, like, said they don't want to see notifications from the divorce club. Yeah, they. but then you you have to specifically go in and do that, I think. And if they've done that, like, why are they in it to begin with? Yeah. I don't know what's going I, on. I don't know. I don't know. Maybe we just need to start adding random people to the divorce club, though. Maybe we should start tagging everyone. Every, every single post. person. <laughs> yeah. in the divor- that would be funny. Then they have to see it. Yeah. Yep. And then we would know they had to ignore it. If yep. they didn't <laughs> at least like, you know. Or yeah, or yeah. You, all you gotta, it's cool if you just like it, you yeah. know. And then it just it shows that you appreciate the content we're producing. There's some solidarity. Yeah. Doing this for you. <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh, what else? I uh, am finally feeling a little bit more comfortable. I got my tax return yesterday. That's good. So, I, uh, Lindsay and I got caught up and we weren't very far behind Mm -hmm. or anything like that, but we, like, caught up on all, like, squared away on bills and rent and everything for this month and, and then, uh, you know, I'm not going to buy anything else, but I did, 
I had some gift cards left over from Barnes and Noble, and I ended up I ended up spending twenty dollars out of my own pocket, but I uh, I got a, I got a hundred and fifty dollars worth of books for twenty bucks. Nice. Uh, did you get like mostly graphic novels? Yeah, I got hardcovers. Um, I got volume three of Revival, uh, and I got volume one of East of West, and uh, I got Brian Brian Vaughn's uh, The Private Eye, hmm. which was a an online comic that was collected into hardcover. Yeah. But each one of them cover price is. 50 bucks and then barnesandnoble.com was you know had them all they were already like 15 to 20 percent off and then i had a 20 percent off coupon for your entire order and then image books were buy one or buy two get one free wow and then i had like 37 dollars in gift cards so is that all stacked then it all stacked up and i only spent 20 dollars very nice. On three hardcover, hardcover books. Very nice. Yeah. Good deals. There. So I'm excited about that. Yeah, I was uh, saying earlier, uh, I should take a look at Paper Girls mm-hmm. for next week. I need to borrow your first trade because I still don't have issue three. I've still not read it myself. Okay, well. But I planned on doing so. Okay. So as soon as I get through that, I'll let you know. And then. Yep. Yeah, I only need it for the one issue. I have every other issue. Okay. Except for one, a new one came out yesterday. I could go pick that up before next week. Uh, I think the one that came out yesterday, the new arc. Mm-hmm. Oh, um, maybe this would be a good thing to kind of take a look at before we go. But uh, Bender came over and he uh, took in the entire Royal Rumble pay-per-view did with us on Sunday night. Uh-huh. Uh huh. What are your impressions of the the Royal Rumble? Had you ever seen a Royal Rumble before? No, I'd never seen a Royal Rumble before. Um, it was it was more exciting than other matches, and you know, I I thought it was I thought it was more exciting. I still thought, I thought it was a little silly, mm-hmm. just because. You know, again, it's not just like, it's it's not just ten dudes just duking it the fuck out in the ring. It's like ten dudes duking it out for two minutes and then sitting on their butts and waiting for the next guy to come in the ring. And then watching one dude take on the newcomer while they sort of sit around and pretend punch each other you know there are there's a couple instances throughout the match where you've got 12 guys and everyone's wrestling with somebody and you know people are getting thrown over the top and people are getting thrown to the mat and Mm -hmm. blah blah blah, whatever and like it's exciting but the the hilarity like in between Mm -hmm. like fucking jericho just like (laughs) popping up like he's literally just like laying on the ground outside well, that's, that's he's a heel yeah that's what he does it was a it's a tactic uh-huh usually one person every year will try and do something like that just where, sit there like i don't know if you know who the announcer jerry the king lawler is if you've seen him he's an older guy he announced the rumble yeah okay yeah. well he used to wrestle right and one year he went under the ropes and hid under the ring for almost the entire Royal Rumble until Shawn Michaels went out and found him and like pulled him out and threw him back in and then threw him over the top. (laughs) So certain guys will try and do that. And like, you know, two years ago, Rusev, he went out and like, you know, people forgot about him. And then he came back in at the very end. Everyone thought he was going to win it. And then he ended up getting eliminated. So Uh Usually they try and work that in somehow. Yeah. But I don't know if you noticed the disgust when Roman Reigns came out at number oh, 30. Oh, yeah. No, yeah. I, okay. It was it was very noticeable. Yeah. See, everyone was hoping 
that it would be that you get at least one or two big surprises. Yeah, that's one of the great things about the Rumble is usually there are at least a couple people that you haven't seen for a long time or like rumors. Oh, this guy's gonna come back in the Rumble, but that didn't happen. And like nobody everyone, was a surprise. Not really. No, and like everyone. There were all these rumors going around that it would either be like Finn Balor, who you know, yeah, or uh, Kurt Angle. I don't know if you're familiar with him. He was like really popular in the late '90s, early 2000s, and then he left WWE and went to uh, TNA, and he wrestled there. And he just left TNA last year after being there for almost 10 years, and so he's kind of been in limbo. And there were like these rumors that he was going to come back. Uh huh. And so you had some pretty big names that people were hoping would get that, like, number 30 spot. Yeah. So then, when it was Roman Reigns, who had just wrestled earlier in the night, Yeah. you know, it was a big disappointment. Everyone's like, what the fuck? Really? I, and you like, know, I, I definitely see, I've heard, you know, I've heard you talk about before how WWE just continually pushes Reigns and no one likes him. Yeah. And I was like... This whole pay-per-view is like they're pushing Roman Reigns and no one fucking likes it. Yeah. They just want him to be that guy everyone loves and he's not. Yeah. But they, rather than like doing the smart thing and making him a bad guy, they keep sending him out, sending him out there acting like, oh, he's your top baby face good guy. Uh, he doesn't even look like a good guy. I know. That's the crazy thing. I don't know how they don't see it. Yeah. They're just hoping at some point everyone's going to start cheering for him, and it's just not happening. Right. So it's it's very confusing. I what's what's Finn Balor even doing? Because that would have been fucking awesome if he he got out. injured. Yeah, I I think I saw on his Instagram or something a long a while ago. It was back in August. Yeah. He like, I think he tore. Like set he was wrestling Seth Rollins. And Seth Rollins power bombed him into, like the barricade on the outside. Uh-huh. And when he went back, he tried to catch himself, and his arm hit, and it ended up like, I think tearing part of his bicep and his pectoral muscle, uh-huh. and like, dislocating his shoulder and really nasty injury. So he yeah. had to have surgery, and uh, he was being checked to like get cleared last week. Uh huh. And apparently he didn't get cleared. They said he's coming back sometime in March. Okay. So, because I do like Finn Balor, I think he's cool. Yeah. So he'll probably be back for WrestleMania. Yeah. But then, like you know, the other big match I guess was the uh, the AJ Styles and John Cena match. Uh huh. So. Which I wanted AJ to win. Yeah, I know. Then... Super Cena. Yeah. Once again, it was kind of like Cena. Kind of seems like um, the Hulk Hogan of this generation. Yeah, definitely. Where like no, just like no one can beat him. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think I saw it coming because like that was John Cena's sixteenth World Championship that he won, uh-huh. which ties Ric Flair for the most ever. Yeah. So I figured that was going to happen at some point. Like, they weren't just going to not tie. Yeah. Or, you know, have have that one other person that, like, is making it, you know. Do you mm-hmm. think they'll give Cena a 17th? I don't know. I don't know. They might. Because I feel like he's still got, you know, at least another five years left. Uh-huh. And I feel like at some point in that time, he's going to get number 17. And then he'll be, oh, this, yeah. he's the greatest ever, you know. He has done a lot for the company, and yeah, I mean, if you heard him talking about like his Make a Wish stuff, he is, he's like the number one Make a Wish grantor, like in the, the existence whole, of the whole thing. Really, no one has done more Make a Wish appearances, like you know, granted more wishes than he has. So he's he's constantly doing stuff like that even at the end of his match with aj styles he got out of the ring and walked into the crowd and walked right up to a kid and like mm-hmm. put the belt on his shoulder and like took a picture with him and yeah you could the kid like already had like a t-shirt signed by a bunch of people and mm-hmm. had he like gave him his hat and stuff yeah so i mean yeah like <laughs> cena seems like a great dude like mm-hmm. and the thing about him is like he's He's a name outside of WWE, too. Yeah. You know? 
So it's not surprising that, you know, they're they're giving him all that stuff. But still, like, I think it would have been cool. You've kind of got, like, your, your crowd split on Cena. Uh-huh. And even the people who boo him, I think most people respect what he does, you know. But it's, if you listen to, like, the, let's go Cena, Cena sucks, the dueling chant that goes on. Uh-huh. You always notice that the let's go Cena is, like, high-pitched. You know, those are all the kids and right. you know, teen girls yeah. going crazy for him. And then the Cena sucks will always be like your, you know, your smarky, just <laughs> asshole. Butthurt dwellers. <laughs> butthurt guys. Guys who go, you know, and guys who would be like me, you know. Yeah. Just fucking, he's not as good a wrestler as AJ Styles, you know. Who, right. People who appreciate, like, the art form right. of, of wrestling. The and, technique. Yeah. So... Yeah, it was it was a really good match though. I enjoyed them. They work well together. Huh. But I enjoy I uh I enjoy being able to have these discussions <laughs> with you. <laughs> I think it was cool. I like you know, not being a fan, I still was like kind of excited to see Goldberg. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Like that was pretty neat. Um, yeah, it was pretty hilarious that he came in and just wrecked Lesnar. Yeah. And just threw him out, you know, immediately. Yeah. Um, I thought it was rad that the, that all the lights go out for Undertaker and then he's just in the ring. Yeah. Like, that was so fucking cool. Mm-hmm. Like, it's just neat. But you could, Undertaker looked so funny, though, because I'm sure he's, like, a huge dude. Yeah. Um, but just in, like, that, you know, like, old school, like, uh... It's like the singlet. Singlet. The, top, the singlet top, but he's yeah, got, but like, he's the got leather the pants. Yeah, but he's got the long pants on, you yeah. know, and it's just so... He looked, he just looked like he was from a different time, which I know he is, Yeah. but it, it really like mm-hmm. hit home and it, cause he kind of, he's obviously, obviously still kind of, you know, strong or whatever, but he kind of has a gut a yeah. little bit and it's just sort of like. That's this. unfortunate because apparently he, I found out he just had hip surgery. Did he? And he's also like 50 years old. I'm surprised he. So went over the ropes yeah. like you know being being that old and stuff yeah i hope that he's able to like get in a little better shape before whatever match he has at wrestlemania yeah because like his thing for so many years was that he couldn't be beaten at wrestlemania like one person's done it uh-huh. it was lesnar and it was the biggest deal ever when it happened but you know that he did look much more dominant and foreboding when he didn't have a gut you know he had when he just looked ripped you know Uh just muscle bound with that kind of singlet on but when you when you throw the beer belly on there you know it's still the undertaker though so it's yeah like he's cool yeah i think like i think i think if i would have been a fan as a kid i probably would have liked the undertaker yeah probably so i think you would have especially when they did like he used to have like buried alive matches uh, where like at the top of the ramp there'd be like a mound of dirt and like a shovel and yeah you literally have to like beat your opponent and throw him in the hole and then like oh, really? cover him with dirt and then you'd win uh-huh and he also had like his casket matches where there'd be a casket next to the ring and you'd have to win by like throwing the guy in there and getting the casket closed yeah and his little gimmicky matches like that were always fun but yeah, I I thought it, I thought it was cool to see Goldberg, and I of course you know, I know he's older too, but God, he is just a monster. Yeah, <laughs> he's like fifty two, I think, and he is just stacked with muscle. Yeah, yeah, he's he looks like he's been putting the work in. Yeah, he's a fucking beast. <clears throat> yeah. I like wanted I wanted Goldberg to win just because I was like, God damn, look <laughs> at him. Yeah, I think Jason will be happy to hear that. Yeah. Goldberg is his favorite of all time. I think I again. I think if I'd have been a fan as a kid, I probably I might have liked Goldberg too, because he was, you know, there were a few when I was younger. Obviously, the big kind of like the the John Cena's of my childhood. Yeah, I think Goldberg was one of them. Mm-hmm. Uh, Undertaker was one of them. Guys who everyone knew about. Yeah, even if, they even if you didn't watch wrestling, you yeah. still knew who Stone Cold was. Mm-hmm. You know, but uh, I think. Uh, you know, when I was, when I was in grade school, probably like 
I don't know, sixth, seventh grade when I was you know, having sleepovers with my bros. Mm-hmm. Um, one of our favorite things to do was we would rent just like any wrestling game on N64. Oh, yeah. Those were great. And, uh, you know, you'd get like, we would do like elimination matches, I guess. we I mean, none of us even knew like anything, but you would... Uh, you know, knock people out of the ring and they'd be stuck out of the ring. Yeah. So we'd always have like four person matches. We'd knock two people out and then we'd call them the Goonies and they would be outside the ring. And then the object for the other two was to throw one another out. And then the Goonies would like always have bats and stuff and they'd just beat the shit out of like whoever (laughs) fell out of the ring. You'd have to like run away and get back into the ring. Funny enough that you would come to that on your own because that's like a real style of match that they have sometimes really they're called lumberjack matches and you have like usually a group of bad guys and a group of good guys outside of the ring just like all surrounding it Uh uh-huh so if the bad guy in the match gets thrown out all the good guys attack him and start beating the shit out of him and then they throw him back in after Uh they beat him up and vice versa right yeah that's a real thing yeah we would we would do that a lot i don't even think like and you know we never even knew how to win or pin or like yeah. do moves or anything it was just like we just mm-hmm. f- somehow get one another out of the ring and then like i said the other two would just have bats or chairs mm-hmm. or whatever you pull out of the audience yeah you know you were probably playing either wcw revenge no mercy from ww wwf it was still was at the time i think and uh wrestlemania 2000 those were the big in 64 games yeah which are still fun to play. And I think I probably would have, like, picked Goldberg or something yeah. like that, you know. Yeah. Well, are you going to come over for Elimination Chamber in two weeks? Maybe. But, if, you know, if nothing else is going on. I know, uh, my you know, my parents like to have dinners on Sundays. Oh, okay. So, um, that'll, that'll kind of be taken into consideration when deciding but you know if i'm not here for elimination chamber we're going to uh, yeah. uh ring of honor mm-hmm. um very soon yeah i can't remember which date that is that's next look. it's next week is it it's, next week already it's next sunday already yeah wow i know boy it's crazy next week uh if we're winding down here uh, next week, I was thinking we could have our ladies on for a Valentine's Day oh, cast. Oh, yeah, you'd mentioned that. It's a good idea. Yeah. Either, I guess, technically, uh, I guess technically, Valentine's Day is on Tuesday. Mm-hmm. So we could do the following Valentine's Day, but, well, you know, I think we could try for this next Thursday. Yeah. So, but yeah, maybe you all can, uh, y'all can look forward to... Having our having our ladies on here, a nice romantic podcast. Yeah, yeah. Maybe we'll drink wine. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that sounds good. We'll have a nice box of chocolates here. And yeah, a box wine. of chocolates and wine. Oh my god, we totally should, but don't tell them. Okay. We should just have wine and chocolates, and we can candlelight the room and stuff. <laughs> we'll put a movie on. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, we can do that. Maybe The Notebook? No, Time Traveler's Wife. Time Traveler's Wife? Yeah. I've never seen it's either. It's really so. sad. Okay. But it's really good. Okay. Well, we'll look forward to that. And um, we're going to try to pick up Super Scary and Super Fanatics, too. Yeah. Um, even with our, even if our ladies are on, we'll try maybe touch on that next week. Mm-hmm. Uh, I know whatever super scary is, I'm sure Lindsay will be able to contribute. So, okay. Well, that's going to do it for tonight. Thank you guys. And we'll see you in the outro. Bye. Hope you liked that. I just thought it was weird that we said bye at the beginning of the intro. Yeah, because then we come right back. Yeah, with the actual episode. Oops. Next time we'll say enjoy. Yeah, enjoy. Oh well. That's okay. Yep. Um. So that's that. Um. We'll be back here next week. Um.
Check us out all across social media land, all across the internet, uh, anywhere from our superdivorceme.com official site to uh, the Divorce Club on Facebook to facebook.com slash superdivorce, um, all across your Twitter, your Instagram, Twitter, whatever, you say, just at, at superdivorce, super Instagram at superdivorce band, Snapchat superdivorce. And then our personal pages. If you want to follow me on Instagram, Twitter, or Snapchat, just look up Nicholas Villars. That's my <laughs> username. If you want to follow me on Twitter, look up Bender If You Nasty. If you want to follow me on Instagram, it's Bender Butt. And uh, apparently, if you want to follow me on Snapchat, it's Bender's Butt mm -hmm. with an S. Because I'm I'm Bender and I'm all about butts. <laughs> um. And that's about it. Yep. Hopefully we'll be back next week with uh, Super Scary, Super Fanatics, and Our Ladies. A romantic evening with Super Divorce. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> that's, hopefully that's what we'll have, have for you next week. So uh, until then, have a super day. Bye-bye. Super Divorce.